Hello ladies and gentlemen, RFB Shard here for my other, my, the for another weekly video. Um, this time around, the subject I'm going to tackle is one that both annoys me, yet mostly confuses me. And that's Google Stadia. I honestly want to know what the fuck they are smoking at the Google offices, and I want to know if they're going to make that available as a product, because clearly it's some good shit. Because I don't understand what the fuck they're trying to do. Now, they've made a big deal about this being a cloud gaming service. Something that is apparently going to come up as the big hoopla in the next few, you know, the next console generations at least. And I've heard the phrase innovative thrown around, which just... No, it's not. For those of you poor, defenceless plebeians who've been living under a rock for the last eight millennia, cloud gaming has been done before, relatively successfully. There's a little known gaming service that, I'm not sure if it's still around, but it was a while back, called OnLive. Now, the online game, the OnLive gaming service was closer to a Netflix for games than Stadia will ever be. Granted, it ran a um, free to use the service, but it was more of a rental type deal, whereby you could get into the service for free. There was, a, and that's my kitty. Um, there was free games that you could play, but they were limited to like a one-hour trial of each game. You know, give you a flavor of the game and think if you want to rent it. Now you were renting games for like three days at a time, I think. And it was like five bucks a rental. But they also gave you the option to buy the games on their service. Heavily discounted. I believe the purchase price was like 20 bucks. So you'd rent for five bucks, play it, see if you liked it. If you wanted to keep it, you'd pay 20 bucks and you'd, you'd get the game. You'd get full access to, to play and go on multiplayer and do whatever. Now, the reason the service didn't work is it really didn't have a lot of marketing. And also, people get kind of iffy when you mention rentals, and I get that. You don't want to rent, you want to own, and you want to own fully. So, I get why it didn't really take off, but as far as I'm concerned, it was a decent service at the time. Limited because it had uh, a lack of servers um, worldwide, so you were really reliant on your internet speed. And for those of us who at the time had shit hardware, because I was, my PC had broke down at that point and I was using a really shitty laptop but still wanted to play some half decent games, you were able to, to actually play games on crappy hardware. And I think the the big release at the time was like the first Arkham game. I, I, like I can't do dates, I'm really shit at these. Um, but I remember using the service and I remember it was pretty decent. It was okay. And it had a sort of social element to it as well. It was kind of Twitch before Twitch. You had people who would watch you play games and they could chat to you. You couldn't really chat back to them, but you could read their comments and you could react. Those are people who come into games and, oh, you missed a secret and it was behind this wall, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, that was kind of fun. It was an interesting little project, you know? It was a, a nice little experiment. So, when I heard of Google Stadia, I thought, maybe Google's bought out on live. Maybe they're going to do a cloud gaming service, take the, the head from there take what they have done and build upon it using Google's immense server farms to create truly interesting gaming experiences using cloud gaming. No, I was very wrong. I was very, very wrong because clearly the Google execs in charge of Stadia have spent the last six months huffing paint because that's not what they're going for. What they're going for is a cloud gaming service without the games, a console without a console, a gaming service without the service, because what you're getting <laughs> is a digital platform and you have to pay for the privilege. Could you imagine having to pay Steam just to access games? You have to give them 10 bucks every time you fucking log in? I mean, this is essentially what they're going for. Stadia offers a free service. But that free service doesn't give you any games. 
It's a gaming service for the, the games. You are paying to use their platform. You're paying them to use their storefront. What fucking bull... That's like Epic. Even Epic isn't that fucking shit. They don't charge you admission to see their craptastic selection of bullshit. It's fucking ridiculous. And this is the thing. Their free service limits how you can enjoy these games. Because you can only, like, you can only stream a maximum of 1080p. You can only stream um, certain audio channels. You can only get so much bandwidth. It's, it's fucking dumb. And here's the thing. Their premium version... The one you pay for, the 10 bucks a month, which before anybody goes, well, 10 bucks a month isn't much, you pay more for that on Netflix. Yeah, I get that. But here's the kicker. You still don't get any fucking games. Their premium service, the one you pay for, could give you a free game once a month, if they decide to. And their first game, their first free game that's coming out, is Destiny 2. Now, those of us who don't already have Destiny 2 know for a fact that Destiny 2 is going free to play in the next coming months, and it's going to be on Steam and every other fucking platform anyway. So it's hardly a decider to drop money on this. But here's the, the, the ultimate thing. If I haven't convinced you why this is such a stupid fucking idea by now, allow me to drop the knowledge bomb on you. You're not getting these games discounted. You're not getting these games half price, you're not getting them, even 10% off. You're paying Google 10 bucks a month to use their streaming service, their cloud gaming, to buy a game at full price that you won't even own. You're paying full price for a rental. Now, if you were on live, if you're using on live for rentals five bucks, that's, you're not really losing much, even if you don't get the game, you're still playing it. But they want full $60 per game. And you can't even download the files. You can't even have it on your computer. You can't mod it. You can't edit it. You can't fucking solve any problems that go wrong. Everything is reliant on their hardware at the other end. Google goes down. You don't get your games. Google has an outage. You don't get your games. There's no offline mode with Stadia. It's not like fucking Steam where there's an offline mode where you've got your games there and they're on your machine so you can play them even if Steam servers are down. It's not like the Xbox Game Pass, which is actually closer to a Netflix for games than Stadia is because you pay five bucks a month and you actually get access to games that, again, you can download onto your computer. So if there is an outage, you can still play your games. It boggles my fucking mind. I cannot get this... I cannot make this clear enough. How does anybody think this is a good service that is possibly going to help any gamer anywhere when you don't actually own your games? We have enough trouble as it is with constant DRMs and constant online bullshit of game developers changing their games on their behest at their fucking whim that can ruin them for the gamers who have bought them. Gamers? Gamer del Toro. Sorry, I had a fucking mouth fart. Um, but you guys know what I mean. Before, like, it, fucking old man shard here, but back in the day, you bought a game, you had the game. You had it on a disc, nothing changed. There may have been patches or updates, but the core of the game remained the same. Now you've got games that are constantly changing like, some of them are even unrecognizable to the way they used to be. Like, they've had complete shifts and changes in how, how they play and how they, they operate. It's, it's, it's insane. I don't get it. And this is another step in the wrong direction. This is a step that game companies have more control over the products they create that you are purchasing, but you don't have the rights to own. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if it's digital or otherwise, if I buy a game, it's mine. I can throw that disc into the fucking sun if I so chose. I could delete the files, I can edit it, I can rip it to fuck. It's mine. As long as I'm not selling it 
and making profit on someone else's work or claiming that that work is mine, I can do whatever the fuck I want with that game. But Stadia is is creating a dangerous precedent to where the companies can hold hostage your games. Where if you get your, your Uplay account banned or something because you said something that fucking Ubisoft didn't like, they could ban access to your games on Stadia. And there's no way of getting that back. It's not like you have the files so you could possibly try and work around the Uplay launcher or whatever to still play your games just without dealing with their online DRM bullshit. You have no option at this point. They pay Google. Google says, nah, and then your account, gone. So this is this is a bullshit system. It's a bullshit idea. It's fucking stupid. I don't know anybody who that badly wants to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey on their fucking phone that they're willing to pay essentially like a rental fee for the service and then 60 bucks up front for the game. So you're basically get, get, getting charged 70 bucks. So that's 10 bucks more than you'd get anywhere else to not even own it, to not even have access to the files. Nah. Sorry. But any of you fuckers who are defending Stadia need to wise the fuck up. This is not what we want gaming to be. Digital downloads are one thing. Additional content is a, is another thing entirely. But having someone police access to your games and tell you that the money you've paid isn't the money that you've spent to purchase a product. No. It's a license fee. You get access to the content as long as we dictate you can. Nah. That shit needs to stop. Gaming is a big industry. And it has become so bullshit. So corrupt. So toxic. Over the last 20 years, I'd say. Of companies just constantly pushing. Pushing for more and more money. Never happy. Never satisfied with the amount of, the ridiculous amount of money that they pull in every year. Now some of these CEOs and executives have more money than could physically be spent in a lifetime. Even if your entire freaking bank balance was to be spent on the priciest of cocaine and hookers. You'd never spend that money. Bye bye push push. Okay? You'd never spend that money. And yet these are the fuckers who are monetizing the shit out of every game who are nickel and diming everybody they can find with cosmetics and fucking XP boosters and all this other shit and who are firing people hard working people who make these games the poor bastards that are getting whipped to fuck in this industry and being treated like shit are the ones that are getting fired while these fuckers are still getting bonuses nah if this was in any other industry, if the banking industry tried to pull that shit, if the fucking retail industry, if your local subway tried to pull that shit, there would be an uproar. And there needs to be. Those of us who play games, and there's a lot of us now, we all need to wise up to the, what's going on in this industry and we need to do something about it. Either speak out, email the companies, email watchdogs that watch these companies. Hell, just don't buy their fucking games. Support indie developers. Support developers that don't treat their personnel like shit. Support developers who make products for the love of making the games, not the love of the almighty Benjamin. So, that's me. I'm done. Sorry. I got a little preachy at the end there. I do apologize. It's just, I get, I'm so fucking sick of seeing this shit. It's, gaming was a hobby that I personally enjoyed. And if it wasn't for games like Earth Defense Force 5 and, you know, shit like fucking uh, Deep Rock Galactic and stuff like that, I would have stopped gaming a long time ago. Because these games are still fun. They're there for the joy of the game. They're there because they're ridiculous and they're fun. They're not there to make a million fucking bucks. They're not there to screw you for 3,000 bucks worth of fucking cosmetics and DLC and microtransactions. So, anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, I really do appreciate you watching the video. I'm sorry I got a little uh, preachy at the end there. 
But as always, I will catch you all in the next one. I appreciate you watching the video all the way to the end. And of course, if you guys want to like and uh, the video and share it, it's entirely up to you. I really don't fucking care. Um, I'm not here for the subs. I'm just here for the conversation. So if you guys want to comment down below, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. So that's me, guys. Thanks for watching again. Shout out.